In this video, I'm gonna talk about the poor man's process and my experience using this technique with the intent of making it look real. No kind of artsy stylized use, just the aim of making it look convincing. So first of all, what is the poor man's process and how did it come about? Usually there are three ways of pulling off a moving interior car scene. Option one, shooting it for real. An example of this is the film Drive starring Ryan Goslin. That is some of the opening shots for that matter, as apparently there were some safety disputes about doing this. The shots in the film are actually from a test shoot before safety concerns were addressed. However, the test shots were so good that they made it into the final film. Option two, using a low loader or process trailer probably the more preferred method of shooting in a real location. This takes the burden of driving the car off of the talent. The car is parked on the trailer and towed. A great example of this is in the movie Lock, starring Tom Hardy. It's a film that is shot almost entirely inside a car and I personally think it's excellent and I would highly recommend that you watch the film if you haven't seen it already. Option three is the poor man's process, which is what we're gonna be doing today. The poor man's process is a technique used in filmmaking to create the illusion of a character driving a car without actually filming the actor behind the wheel. This is typically done by filming the actor in front of a blue screen, green screen, or nowadays even an LED wall or volume and then compositing the shot of the actor into a pre-recorded shot of the car driving on a road. It's called the poor man's process because it's a cost-effective way of creating the illusion of the talent driving the car without having to pay for the logistics of shooting on a real public road. Some great examples that you've probably seen are some of the shots in the Fast and Furious franchise, and the Batman, where variations of the technique were used. I'm gonna be creating a very cost-effective version of the poor man's process that I think does stay true to the word poor, because I was doing this in my back garden with just one other person helping me out and a very limited uh, selection of gear. The main thing that sold the illusion of this poor man's process was the use of a dado light mounted on a c-stand on an arm uh, that could be boomed and swung across the bonnet of the car the main thing that sold the movement of the car was the dado light this was to simulate passing street lights i clamped a little bit of orange gel to it just to simulate the kind of sodium vapor color that those street lamps give off as i swung the light across the car i slowly dimmed it before returning it to its original position and repeating. It's worth mentioning that these shots were part of a short film that I did, and it was critical that in this point in the film, the talent's face was obscured, um, so we couldn't see who it was. Next, I thought I would take a leaf out of Locke's book and play with reflections, because that really doesn't cost me any extra money or time on that set, so, that's what I did. But by doing this, it can really enhance the realism of this technique. I wanted to shoot my own custom backgrounds and reflections. And to get those, I made my own DIY camera car mount. That is essentially one of those big suction cup things. Um, I think they're used for carrying big panes of glass or windows, I'm not really sure, but they are excellent for mounting on a car, so. I picked a couple of those up. I drilled some holes and attached a bit of MDF along with a quarter inch bolt so I could fix the tripod head to it and that's about it. Now I should, if I was doing this properly, get permission to do this on public roads, but I think the saying goes, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. So I'll leave it at that. I made sure to throw the camera out of focus to get lovely realistic bokeh. Just look at that bike. In post-production, this was all composited. And again, I'm not gonna go into graphic detail about how this was all composited because that could be a whole nother video series in itself. 
But all I will say is that the uh, water assets and the bump maps from those were placed on top of the reflections because that's how it would appear in real life. So that those reflections are actually being distorted and refracted by the water. Once everything is edited together with the exterior shots too, this is what the final shot looks like. Now if you're wondering, the short film hasn't actually been released yet, but I do hope to do that in the near future. If you've got any suggestions of how you would shoot a poor man's process, then I'd be interested to hear about those. So make sure you leave a comment below and I'll be sure to get back to you. Hello everybody, how's it going? If you like this video, then don't forget to give it a like. It really does help to beat the YouTube algorithm. If you're new to the channel, then make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with all of the content being released on this channel. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Probably the more, probably, probably the more, probably the more, probably or probably? Probably.